Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly episode. And as usual, of course, I've got some pretty neat die cast to show you today. I picked out a lot of cars today. This is probably going to be a long video. I've got a lot backlog I still have to show off. Um, there's some ones I had to throw in today because I have to photograph some of these cars for the Lamley Instagram 64 car Royal Rumble which is going to be exciting. We spent a lot of time, by the way, uh, me and John and uh, Sam and Brian and Alex and Graham and Derek. I think that's everyone. Ooh, I'm, it's embarrassing if I forgot somebody, but whatever. We had a meeting and we discussed it on the 64 cars. It's going to be really, really cool. I think we're going to kick that off on Christmas Day. So look up for that on Instagram. That is going to be fun. Um, very, very cool. And I shot a bunch of pictures for it. So it's it was just a blast. It was fun working together to put that list together and now to start ticking off pictures that we had to take uh, to include in this in this thing. And it's kind of a big deal. It's fun. It's a, it's a blast. A lot of people participate in voting and it's a really good time. So if you're not on Instagram, start one. Follow me, follow Lamley, of course. And uh, yeah, check that out and cast your votes. It's going to be a good time. All right. So uh, without further ado, let's kind of get into the stuff that I got to show you today. Um, I've got some Inno 64. We've got, these are just, they just came out. We got a Range Rover in white. In I've talked about Inno 64, you know, in other videos and stuff like that, me being very impressed with them. Um, and I just really, I wish they were slightly less expensive. I would definitely pick up more of them but I'm loving my Inno 64s. Here's a Jaguar XKS, or XJS. And then uh, this one I gotta be really careful with, and I'll show you why in the this, this <laughs> second part of this video. Um, I don't know, it, that'll make sense, so stay tuned for that. I'm not gonna spoil it, but I'll show you what happened to the, whatever. Anyway, I gotta be very careful with this one. Um, so. Got that one in a race livery. That looks fantastic. We're going to look, of course, at all three of those in the next segment. I got a very rare Ultra Red, actually. Uh, pretty rare. I don't know if a lot of people even know this exists, per se, but uh, it, but it, it's rare-ish. And the reason why I say that, this is version C slash D. When Auto World did that one time, they had A, B, C, and D in the same releases, so four different colored cars. Just so you know, if you're new to Auto World, they did that for, I think, only two or so releases, maybe three. I think just two. Yeah, two releases they did that. One of them is called Premium Release 5, okay? This is from Premium Release 5. This is an old 442. This is before they started using years. So there was no 2016 Release 5, even though this did, I believe, come out in 2016. Um, they just had premium release one, two, three, four. This is five. And then after five, they went to 2017 premium release one. Okay. A little auto world history for you. What have you. This is the ultra red on the C and D card. This is one of the weirdest sets of auto world to complete. I have one more car I need to find, and then I will have my set complete. And that is the Walmart exclusive Firebird Trans Am Ultra Red. By the way, there's three different versions of the Trans Am Ultra Red in this set. There's an A and B one, there's an A and B Walmart exclusive one, and there's a C and D version. Pretty wild. So I've got two of them. I need that Walmart exclusive one. There's also there's this was a variation. This is a CD one. This is a variation of the AB one. And I believe the only difference is the interior color is red on this. We will look closer at that uh, when we actually get this open and I'll grab out the other one just to compare it. So we're getting a little nerdy here with Auto World. But uh, the last one that's different is I'm looking at my wall here to uh, figure it out. It's the, uh, Galaxy 500 XL. There's, there's a wheel difference between the two. There's actually three variations of that Ultra Red as, as well. One of them might be like a weird early release one. 
this is really hard to explain. And hopefully I find that Trans Am Ultra Red at some point in time so I can look at the whole series together with you and try to explain it. Anyway, just so you know, it was a weird transitional series for Auto World between doing premium stuff and the year before it, they did some weird stuff with A, B, C's, and D. They're very, very limited. And for three of the cars out of the six in that set, um, they have variations of Ultra Reds. Okay. All right, so now <laughs> we're gonna move on from that. More Auto World though, real quick. We did get a, uh, this one right here, which is a Super Mini Wheels exclusive uh, Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat limited to 2,400 pieces in kind of a really cool like retro golf livery. I kind of really like this one and I haven't really been a fan of golf stuff recently, but I don't know, this one just kind of looks really cool just because of the retro look that it has to this golf livery. At least it looks retro to me. It looks like something designed back in a different time. Okay. And then shout out to my buddy Dustin. He hooked me up with a Matchbox Super Chase. We had the monthly meet today, by the way. I'm not showing you much from it. Uh, actually, nothing from it, I don't think, besides this. Uh, but I had to get this one open, so yes. Best matchbox of the year. That's what you guys voted for on Instagram on the Lamley uh, top 16 matchbox cars. I believe this won, so pretty sure it did. I don't think we've seen the final technically yet, but I think this one was winning by quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that. And then um, <clears throat> I found this in a store. One of the latest matchbox collectors set. I need the rest of it, and hopefully I will find it soon. This was the only one left hanging there on the pegs. I know my buddy Crazy Todd has a Lamborghini Diablo for me. He did pick up an extra one for me, so that's awesome. I will have that for sure. And I believe there's like four different variations of the two of them are two W20. I think there's like a headlights up, headlights down, maybe the steering wheel over there, over there. I don't know. Something like that. And then the Ford GT40 looks beautiful. This is one of the best Matchbox collector sets I think we've seen. Uh, very, very cool. I'll have a hard time leaving any of those behind when I see them again and again and again. So um, the hoarder in me will want to pick all, up all of those, even the Bronco. And the Bronco is probably the least, the co least coolest one to me, but it still looks pretty cool. All right. And then we got Tomica Skyline Super Silhouette. This thing is rad. Very rad. I took some two cool pictures of it, and I posted them to my Instagram. If you've seen them, you know what I'm talking about. This thing is gorgeous, and we are going to take a look at this. Not cheap. However, much cheaper to get this one that just came out than any of the previous releases. The previous releases of this, which haven't been out for a long time, are very expensive, or at least people are asking ridiculous prices for it if you try to find it on eBay. So my recommendation is if you think this is expensive, but you want one of these in your collection, I would buy it right away because it's not going to get any less expensive. Okay. Get it now. If you want it and can afford it, buy it like today. Okay. Do it. All right. So that's pretty awesome. <clears throat> I've got that one, and then I've got two other TLVs to look at. These impressive wagons. Uh, these look pretty awesome as well. I got both colors of this one because I was on the fence about it. The blue is kind of the quintessential color for this car, but the yellow I thought was unique enough that I would just I needed both, so I got both. And then we got a red box Tomica Bugatti Veyron. Uh, this thing is it's blue. When you see a red box Tomica Premium like this, that means they're the limited edition color. There's a lot less of these made apparently than the black box version. So these are typically are a little bit more expensive. I got this one from J Car Diecast though during his Black Friday sale. So that was a sweet little grab uh, off of his website. And then I've got uh, the Toyota Celica XX, which is also a premium release. From Tomica, this is a black box, very cool. And then I got two basics. We've got a BMW i4 and a Nissan Fair Lady Z Nismo GT500, and those are cool too. Um, then what else? Man, that is a lot to go through. Uh, let's burn through a few main lines. I did find this. We're not going to burn. We're not going to open this up. But I found a completely smashed Batsy. I'll show you that up close, but. 
totally misriveted. That'll probably end up on eBay or something. I don't know, just because. I don't collect it, but I couldn't leave it behind. I'm going to pick out just a couple of main lines to look at. Because I don't really want to go through all of them, because otherwise I'm just rushing through this stuff. Here. We'll do these five. How's that? Those look all right. We'll check those out. Um, and then we'll check. I'll try to throw in like five main lines every episode. I should just because I've got a bunch that I haven't even shown, but you guys don't really need. I, I don't feel like I need to show them sometimes because they're main lines. You guys can hopefully find them in your area. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't even hunt barely, but I still end up usually finding the cars that I want. You know, except for like super treasure hunts and stuff, of course. All right. So we got a lot to look at in the next segment. These Jaguars, I'm telling you, actually, you know, 64 in general has been very impressive this year. I don't know. What should we do for like a, uh, a thumbnail? Something like this. That might be good. Is that going to draw enough people in? I don't know. I don't know. All right. Oh, wait. No. You know what will? Super Chase. Very cool. All right. Let's go ahead and flip the camera around and uh, take a look at this stuff, of course, up close. All right. Well, I actually forgot to show you this in the first uh, part of the video, but uh, we got a mystery model here today that we're going to take a look at. Uh, this, of course, if you're familiar with the series, you can probably guess what one I picked up. It's the, it's the one right there, which should be a Bugatti. Um, let me go ahead and open it up. You get a sticker, of course, with the mystery models. And then here's our Bugatti. Here he is right here. In black and gold. That looks really good. By the way, I'm trying to, I got a, like a ceramic tile here. Thought it might look a little cleaner. And it's easier to clean than paper, too. I know I could just replace the paper, but you have to let me know how that looks. The cars are going to sound funny on it, though. Um, but there you go. They roll really nice on it. So what do you guys think about this? There's no uh, detail on the back. Uh, there's some detail on the front, though, and then you get the uh, gold on the sides as well. And I think it looks pretty good. So, uh, yeah, I was glad to find that mystery model to get it off. I think it's the only one I wanted in the set, so I picked it up and... You know, the rest is history. All right. So there's that. Let's see if I can just wipe this off. All right. So let's just uh, get through this, like, nerdy nerdy time right now that may not be interesting to a lot of you. But this is the version uh, A slash B of this old 442 for Premium Release 5 from Auto World. This release, like I said, I believe came out in 2016. And yeah, these have a production date code of 2016 on them. And so there's that. It's a basic ultra red old 442, just an ultra red body. And that is it for these. I don't think there's any other detail on here. Just an ultra red body. And then let's see here. It says uh, Dr. Olds on the uh, license plate. All right. So we got that. And then we have this. So again, it's a rare one. It's sort of, it's going to be 3% roughly of double that number. So you guys can, can do the math on it. There's probably not a terrible amount of these made, um, in this particular variation with the red interior. And I think it is the only difference on here is that interior because the version C car, or was it the version? Oh man, should have got the regular ones out. I mean, whatever. I don't think it matters. I think the version, this car actually had a red interior, this white one. And that's why this has a red interior. So these are different, but by only that. Back when they used to have the collector boxes, I missed these. And then here we go. There's the ultra red. So I don't see any other difference, just looking at it right off the bat here. No, there is no difference beside the, uh, besides the, uh, interior being red. And that, I believe, is the only thing different about it. Same thing, Dr. Old, you got there. Oldsmobile, and it looks pretty good. I did, the motor underneath should be the same on both of these as well. It's shiny. 
Yep. So, see, not that exciting, I suppose, but interesting indeed to me and anybody else that is a total nerd for the auto world. All right, let's get into Inno 64 very somewhat quickly, not quite quickly, but whatever. I should probably just leave these off the base. I have to take pictures of them. Uh, so we're going to start with the Range Rover Classic. This came out in white, and the other color is like a British green. Um, and it, that looks really good, too. So the boxes that Inno's come in, by the way, are pretty high quality. They're good, thick plastic, nice and clear. Uh, they come with a pretty basic base, but it's nice and shiny, and uh, it looks really good. Uh, we'll go ahead and unscrew this. Actually, I'm just going to leave it on. I hope you guys don't mind. I'm going to leave this one on. I have to unscrew it in a little bit anyway. I'm just going to leave it on. Well, you know what? No, that's not my style, is it? We're going to go ahead and, and take it off because you guys want to know if it rolls and all that jazz. And... So Inno's are roughly about $20 a piece. Okay, they're not, they're not on the cheap end of die cast, but they're not on the super expensive end either. This thing is very nicely done. Uh, very, very nicely done. You gotta be careful, Inno's will have small tiny pieces that are easy to break off, like these mirrors in the front, which also have a reflective thing on the side there too, so that's a cool touch. Uh, the windshield wipers are separate pieces as well, so be careful if you're like dusting these or something like that, that you don't catch those and rip them off. Um, so you got some some pieces and bits to be worried about as far as, uh, you know, keeping the model intact. The base is metal. They didn't always have metal bases on Innos, but I believe all their newer toolings have metal bases. They kind of switched up how they were doing things. At first, I wasn't really a big fan of the Bram. And then they started just putting out really, really nicely done, high-quality uh, models. And the, the detail, the uh, quality control and stuff is all, as far as I'm concerned, there uh, to justify getting more of these in the collection. So... Definitely digging this one. Uh, I'm just going to kind of set this aside here. And then we will look at the street version of the XJS. Again, very nice. Very nicely done. Uh, this one gets a white base. These are, by the way, when you buy them, they are wrapped in like a cellophane. I obviously already ripped that off. This one rolls as well, rolls quite well. And check it out. Again, very, very highly detailed. You got side mirrors, you got inserted details for taillights, headlights, etc. Trim painted on. Extra little pieces for windshield wipers. That's just insane. On a 164 scale model. You know, inserted details for the headlights. It's just a cool car. I'm just glad that they did this car. It's so neat. So very, very awesome, again, from Inno. And then the one that was really exciting was this next one. <clears throat> but you guys are going to laugh at what happened to me here. I didn't break the model, but we are going to have to get a wrench out here. We'll see why in a second. <clears throat> get this out of the way. And we'll set that down there. Carefully set that over there, and uh, I think I'll probably be able to get it out with the channel locks. I'm going to have to do that. I'll show you what I mean here in a sec. So, uh, very cool model. Very, very fragile. you got to be careful with it. And I was careful with it, I thought. I didn't break the model. I, I did something else goofy. Um, so I did take these out. I took some pictures of this one already, actually. So... Yeah. Screw head broke right off that screw. And I swear, I did not put a, that much pressure on it. It just snapped right off when I was putting it back on the ba base. Here's the screw head right here. They completely clean sheared right off. 
So anyway, I have to get this out, which shouldn't be in very tight, and it's not. This probably is overkill for a size of tool that I would need to do this with. I think it's turning. There we go. So I got the screw bit out. So that's great. The only problem is now is I need to find a screw that fits in there, which I should be able to find, I think, uh, to be able to go ahead and remount this on the base. Because I actually display my inos in their boxes. It's just easier. I don't have to take up a space in a carny for them and stuff like that. It's just easier just to display them in the boxes and they're protected and all that good stuff. This one's got some very fragile bits. I didn't even notice that it had one of these little tow hook things here in the back. That's easily going to be snapped off. Oh, and it has one in the front too. So each opposing corner. Um, and of course this antenna on the top that's uh, super fragile. Uh, one wiper on this one, which is probably accurate. And I'm just kind of afraid to hold on to it right now. So I'm going to set it down on here because I need it intact for sure for a little bit longer here. Very cool. Uh, let me just very carefully set this aside, move it way towards the back here of this other table so I don't accidentally reach over it and snap off that antenna. That would be tragic. All right. Super Chase Matchbox. Really excited to get this one in. My buddy just gave it to me, which is crazy. I've gotten, uh, I have, I believe I have, I don't have the Corvette Super Chase. I think it's the only one I'm missing. I think there was only three so far, right? Anyway, it doesn't really matter. This is the one that I really wanted was this Porsche because I collect die cast Porsches, right? So very, very cool Matchbox Super Chase. Of course, the card is crispy and all that, but. I don't care. We're going to pull it out. I would say this is probably the first super chase that people are more are really 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 going nuts over. At least in my my diecast circle. The Porsches are always a popular choice. And this thing is awesome. So I can't argue with that. Very very cool. Really need to get one of these, check it off the list without having to stress about trying to find it or get it or paying, you know, a lot on the secondhand market for it. And uh, both the Bronco and this Chase I got from friends, and they basically gave them to me. So <laughs> getting pretty lucky in that regard. I've yet to find one in the wild. So, or did I find one? Did I find that Bronco? No, I don't think I did. Jeez Louise, I can't remember now. I think Todd gave it to me. All right. Anyway, <clears throat> Todd gives me so much stuff, it's hard to uh, keep track of what I, what I got from him and what I didn't. All right. Next is this guy. Where is my focus breathing? Um, so, what's going on there, guy? Let's try that. All right. We got the Bronco from the Matchbox Collector set. Let's open it up right away. Set her down. These come with a little collectible box. That's pretty neat. Uh, this is number 14 of 20, I think, for the year. And the Diablo is the one I really want. So I need to get that from my buddy Todd. He's got one for me. There you go. Bronco in black. It looks really good. Uh, doors open on this one. I like the Matchbox Collector Series. I think it's pretty awesome. It has a mix between like castings that have opening parts, some that don't. And They've just done a really good job with it, I think. You know, they're not as exciting, I think, to people as, like, car culture releases, but they're exciting to me. I just, uh, I really like Matchbox, and, and I say it almost every time I open a Matchbox, it's like, bang for the buck. Matchbox is just awesome. So. It may not be as flashy or as exciting as Hot Wheels and Super Treasure Hunts and stuff like that, but... I don't know. The more you get into like collecting realistic cars, realistic replicas and stuff like that, you start really appreciating Matchbox. At least I did. And that's, that's the way, that's the way it goes for me. All right. Um, 
we're moving along here pretty good. We got uh, the Tomica Skyline Super Silhouette. This is another one I'm like scared to touch. I did already take some pictures of it, uh, like I said in the first half of the video. It comes in this type of packaging, which is a little bit different than uh, both the, what you typically get with like a premium uh, Atomic Limited Vintage and a basic, well, they're none of them are basic or whatever, and a regular release of Atomic Limited Vintage. Uh, this has got a lot of info on here that I can't read, obviously. Uh, Atomica Skyline Super Silhouette. And like I said, if you want one of these, there is no better time than now to try to get one. Uh, it's the most least expensive you're going to get. This is a little antenna that you can put on the top. And you know from me opening up uh, previous Tomic Limited Vintages that this is going to stay right in the bag. I am not going to open that up and I am not going to attempt to glue it in this model. Because it's ludicrous. That's the one thing uh, that I hate about uh, TLV is that they make you do that. In this case, I can sort of understand it. At least the casting has like a hole where the thing goes. So you wouldn't screw up positioning it. But whatever. So this, if you're familiar with the Mazda 787B, this is kind of similar to that in that they ship it in two pieces. There's a front piece there that you can see. And of course, a back piece rest of the car um with the other car i mentioned of course it's the rear that's removable not the front but because uh, this is a front engine automobile but there you go look at all the detail in there look at all the detail inside of the car this is just such a fantastic model it's a metal base metal body metal front half so the only gripe that maybe some people will have about this model is the fact that oh my god did i chip this thing already i might have so you got to be really careful with it um i think there is just a little tiny tiny little chip here this is for me already taking this thing out and playing with it right there in the corner oopsie daisy so like i said this thing's expensive if you do get it you're probably not going to want to touch it too much <laughs> but it kind of just the front end just sits on there it doesn't really even snap into place so this is really just a display only model but there you have it that little thing right there is barely noticeable so whatever it is what it is this thing is sick though just amazingly detailed Super amazing. So you guys will have to let me know what you think about this one. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to carefully put this back. Well, I gotta set it somewhere first. I'm whatever. I'll deal with that off camera. But there you go. This thing is pretty awesome. And like I said, if you ever do want one, now's the time to get one. These are gonna get more and more expensive as time goes on. Even though it's kind of a re-release, I think. I think maybe the first one came with different wheels. All right. More TLV real quick. Uh, we've got the two Impreza Sports Wagon WRX STI version 6. These are both the same, right? Yeah. One of them has glue on pieces. One of them does not. Let's start with the blue one. I've already opened up these two and looked at them. So this is more your traditional Tomica Limited Vintage Neo. In the fact that it has, uh, like, metal body, metal base, it comes in one piece. There's no opening feature. And it has suspension. So, very, very cool. All right, so this one in blue, of course, it's the quintessential color for this car would be like blue with the gold uh, rims or bronze rims or whatever color they are. And it does look very nice. Does everything you would expect from this brand, which is inserted details for the headlights, inserted details for taillights, rubber tires with tread, and it's got the suspension. It's got the beautiful clear glass with the big finger thumbprint on it for me and 
overall just looks really good. I am actually considering just wearing gloves all the time when handling my models because I'm sick of cleaning fingerprints off of them, especially like the more expensive ones that I just feel bad to leave a fingerprint there. Um, but whatever. All right, next is this one. This is the version B in this kind of a unique banana-ish color yellow. This one comes with, oh, I just ripped the box. I am just screwing up today. <sighs> Whatever. All right. In yellow. That's actually a really cool color. I think it's neat. I actually wouldn't mind getting a Subaru in this color. That would be very cool. Um, so this comes with a roof rack or luggage rack thingy. Uh, add on and of course that will not be going on the model because I will if I tried to do that I would definitely screw it up and especially considering the fact there's zero guide for where that's supposed to go up here no holes to, to put it in so there's no way that that's getting added no way whatsoever but again kind of see the detail a little bit more on this one with the taillights and the headlights and how good this thing looks it just looks uh, absolutely fantastic so there's really nothing to complain about there all right keeper moving here actually i don't need to put that back because that's going on display we're going to put this back though along with the uh optionally added component which we will never add and i ripped the box oh well i don't i plan on keeping it anyway you know so i guess it doesn't really matter that much all right tomica premium uh, this one is yeah, that's right the cellophane on these things is almost human proof so I've explained this a lot of times. Tomica Premium is generally not exactly 164 scale. In fact, they do tend to run a little bit large. This one is 162 scale. They do always put the scale on there for you, which I guess is neat. Uh, but this is a Celica XX. They come in a little bag. A lot of times they will have an opening part. Oh, this one's really cool. I didn't even know this. I think this one has flip up. Oh, yes, it does. It's got flip up headlights. It's got pop up, up and down headlights. Woo! Yeah, that's awesome. Shout out to uh, his name, James Pumphrey, Donut Media. Anyway, opening doors. Very cool. Interior's pretty basically cast in there. It's not super detailed like you would see with the Tomica Limited Vintage lines. The wheels are also plastic, but no big deal. Sometimes they have suspension. This one does not. But it does have dual opening parts. We get opening doors and you get these sweet headlights. That's a way better option than having to buy two cars to get an up and a down. Let's throw that in there. That is sweet. And this one does have inserted details for taillights, which is pretty uh, frequently done by Tomica Limited, or not Limited Vintage, Tomica Premium. So the wheels are unique to the car. It's not like they're generic. They are plastic, though. So if that's a turnoff for you, plastic wheels, you may not want to buy that. But these are far less expensive than the Tomica Limited Vintage Alternative. So there you go. I don't even know if TLV put out this particular car. I can't remember. Uh, but I don't have it if they if they did. All right, uh, one more. The premium one. This is the Bugatti Veyron 16.4. Again, this is a limited color. I've shown this casting prior to this episode. Some other episode. I don't remember. It's been a while actually since I showed it in red and black, not blue and black. This is the blue and black one, which is this sort of special edition color, I suppose we could call it, or something like that. Limited edition, limited first edition, or something is what they call them. Uh, this cast is not quite as impressive as that Celica that we just looked at. Not as exciting, I don't think. The wheels are kind of what are goofy looking to me. And the Veyron, in general, I'm starting to think that the Veyron is actually the ugliest Bugatti. Uh, like the Chiron looks way better than the Veyron. It's just, this thing is so bulbous. 
We do have inserted details for the headlights. We got painted details for taillights. No opening features on this one. So to me, it's not the best casting from Tomica Premium, but it is still pretty cool. But man, just it, the way it's it just really bulbous. <laughs> so best way to describe a Varen. At least the die cast ones that I have seen. All right. Next, we will take a peek at some basics. And then we'll get into basic Hot Wheels, and then we'll be out of here uh, for the day, for the week. And I got some work to do taking some pictures. All right, so starting with the Nissan Fairlady Z Nismo GT500. I was thinking uh, the other day, so I was thinking that, man, there's been a lot of Z cars put out this year. What, this one's got optional decals? Oh, man, I don't want work to do. I'm not going to put these on. I probably would look way better with them on, but I'm not going to put them on because... Are these stickers or the actual decals? Decals, like water slide decals. I think they're stickers. Pretty sure they're stickers. The way that they're cut out there. I mean, it might say something about them on here, but I wouldn't be able to read it. And then we have, uh, so what, what, what was I saying? Oh yeah, Z cars. There's been a lot of diecast Z, like new tooling Zs coming out this last year. Some from Inno, there's been stuff from Hot Wheels. It's just been... Uh, a year of the Z. That might be worth a video in and of itself. So anyway, this car is pretty pretty neat. Just a basic Tomica. If you guys are not familiar with basic Tomicas, we got plastic base on this one. Metal body. Plastic tires. They have generic wheels. They use basically two different wheel types for every single one of their models. So it's kind of the basic Hot Wheels of Tomica. But I think they're done quite well. And the quality control is very nice on these typically. So... And they're not expensive, so that's cool too. They're not usually one uh, straight up 164 scale either. So this one's 165th. So at least it tells you um, a lot of them have suspension. That's cool. And this is a, this is one that's not. This is a first for me anyway. Uh, for them to come with stickers or decals, and I think these are oof. Okay, they are stickers. Not going to be putting them on. Why? Oh, because I'll screw it up. That's why. <laughs> I'm not going to put them on. Uh, I guess i got to save this box now for sure, because it's got the stickers in it. I'll put this in here. And move the car aside. All right. <clears throat> Next, uh, we got what? What do I have? One more basic? Yeah. The BMW i4. In the scale of 165 as well. <sighs> Come on. You know, I could edit this stuff out, but for some reason I think you guys probably enjoy it, watching me struggle to open up a package every once in a while. What am I doing? What am I doing? Let's try this side. What is holding that together? I have fingernails too. I play like some classical guitar, so I try to keep fingernails on one of my hands all the time. And they do come in use they come in hand handy. They're usable, useful. Quite often. Alright. BMW i4. i4 in scale of 165. Looks like it's gonna be some blue color. I don't know. I just picked it up. Added it to my box and had it shipped. So there you have it. BMW. Oh, nice color. Kind of like navy bluish. Metal flake. So again, pretty basic. It's got that uh, sweet suspension on there. You got some details in the front of the car. It looked pretty decent. Details in the back look pretty good. Nothing opens on these, of course. Uh, but pretty nice. Pretty nice. Okay. Um, what do we got? Oh, shoot. We have an auto world left. I forgot about that. Super mini wheels. 
Uh, okay, there it is. Need a scissors for this one. <clears throat> uh, special edition, one of 2,400 pieces. The ultra red of this actually looks pretty sick. Let's get that eventually. Get out of here. So, so these are cool. They come with a collector box. Very neat. And here's the car. So like I said, it's kind of a weird, uh, kind of retro looking golf livery. It's got some retro cues. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And not much else really to say, but it's just a, a lot of uh, hobby dealers have been doing this casting right now. Um, it's been kind of a favorite of uh, hobby dealers to do exclusives for. And, I mean, I understand this uh, livery is probably a little wild for some of you, but I think it looks pretty neat. Eh, it's not something I would have picked to do, but I like it. I think it looks good. Kind of, I don't know, retro, new, it's, it's whatever, it's a, it's, a, it's a bunch of things, but it's, I think it's kind of neat. All right. All right, we got five more vehicles to look at, and these are going to be basic Hot Wheels. Starting with the Camaro. No, this is not the uh, Super Treasure Hunt. This is the regular version of the vehicle. Super would be kind of cool to have, but this is the uh, 81 Camaro. In green. Got the top tampo there, side tampos. You know, everything you normally would expect from a basic Hot Wheel. Pagani Huayra Roadster, pearl white. Set that guy down. And that looks pretty nice as well. Not much to say about that. It's not a brand new casting, or neither of these are new castings. Been around for a little while. Pretty good detail on this one, for sure. You got, like, some headlight detail, which is nice. You got that taillight de detail, those wild-looking, I don't know, like, flower petal kind of looking taillight assemblies that these things have. Again, Pagani's are probably the, the best-looking hypercars, in my opinion. They just look so cool. Here's a new casting for 2022. Oh, by the way, these are A-case. I think that's where I found them in, is an A-case. So some of these are going to be... Some of these are 2022 cars, and the other ones are... Uh, 2023s. Uh, but we got this Matt and Debbie Hayes 1988 Pro Street Thunderbird in Hot Wheels Drag Street. This is cool. It's pink. Who doesn't like a pink Hot Wheel? You know? But I wouldn't say that about any other brand of die cast. Like, oh, I love pink M2s. I love pink Auto Worlds. No. Pink Hot Wheels people dig. Inserted details, well, part of the windshield is the headlights. That's neat. It's the brand new casting. You got that uh, Thunderbird on the hood. Chute packed in the back. Chrome interior. It's part of this wing. I don't know if the, I wonder if the real car has a chrome wing. Probably does, I guess, if they did that. I don't know why else they would elect to go chrome. Uh, pretty blingy. Uh, looks... Looks all right. All right. And then we got a casting I collect. 70s van, Hot Wheels art cars. Looks like we got word search going on in this one. I see Mattel. I see Hot Wheels cars. That's fun. Let's see how many words you can find on this. Super van. My first love. From Hot Wheels. Well, maybe the Hot Bird is actually considered like childhood stuff, but when I got back into collecting Hot Wheels, like vans, I like vans. And the Super Van was one I gravitated towards. It's nice to see it in the main line, I guess. I don't like that uh, these things always come out in like pop, pop, cart, blah, 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 pop culture. 
with weird graphics and stuff on the side. So even though this is completely weird as well, I don't know. It'd be nice if they put out another van series or something and just did some cool 70s graphics on it or something like that. All right. And then a Porsche 911 GT3 in matte black. I think I've already opened this one uh, as I'm looking at it. But I am too lazy to dig into if that is factual or not. So we're just going to open it again. And th sorry, I guess. It's a sick. Oh, jeez. Now that it's completely messed up, it's a sick looking model. <laughs> Matte black, all black. Looks really cool. Looks kind of like a car culture chase, actually. Very neat. All right, so I think we've gone long enough. And that's going to be it for this episode. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I would tell you what my uh, favorite car is. I don't want to go grab it though, because I set it over here and it's fragile. So what is it? I don't know. The super silhouette is really cool. The Jaguars are really cool. Um, just a lot of cool stuff. Cool to check off an ultra red. That was a very rare one, a very hard one to get or find. Anyway, not really hard to get. Maybe if you find it, it's just hard to find. So it's not terribly expensive if you find it, but it's just not you don't come across it too often. All right. So that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you guys again very much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. And we'll see you next week. Bye.